Diastatic power. It doesn't matter if you're a distiller or a home brewer, if you want to make your own all grain recipes or mess around with all grain, uh, this is probably something you're going to want to understand. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still at the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Diastatic power. Uh, it is important because understanding diastatic power is going to let you uh, basically predict or, or know whether or not the mash that you're about to do is going to succeed or whether it's going to not work out so great. And that doesn't matter whether you're a brewer or a distiller, it's all the same stuff, science works the same, doesn't care what you're making, uh, it's our job to kind of harness it and guide it in the direction we want. Uh, so let's get stuck right in, shall we? Uh, what is diastatic power? Uh, diastatic power is a way of measuring or expressing the power of enzymes that a certain malt has within itself. It refers to the amount of alpha and beta amylase <laughs> within a certain malt that you're going to use and that's important for us because those are the two primary enzymes that we're using uh, during a mash. It's expressed in degrees litna, which is, uh, you'll often see it on spec sheets and things like with an L with a little circle next to it. So whenever you buy malted barley, malted wheat, whatever it happens to be, if it's a malted product and there is some expectation that there might be some enzymatic power in that product, it's going to be in the spec sheet that you get when you buy it. Or if you look, you know, if you're buying online on the website, look in the little spec section from the web page you're buying it, and you'll almost always see it from any good homebrew store. You'll see uh, degrees litna listed as either degrees litna or diastatic power on that spec sheet or website. As a super, super general rule, uh, base malts, distillers malts, things like that are going to have a much higher diastatic power than specialty grains for example, a lot of them will have absolutely zero, so something like chocolate malt will have no diastatic power whatsoever, and then you're going to get kind of a, a range between the two, so generally distillers malt or six rows is going to be the highest, uh, all the way down through to zero, and you'll have things like Munich malt for example will be sitting in the middle, a general rule of thumb is the darker the colour of the malt, the lower the diastatic power you have. So what does that actually mean for us? <laughs> the idea is that uh, you need at least a diastatic power of, some people say 30, I tend to go with 40 in your mash to be able to have a chance of that mash succeeding basically. But here's the thing guys, the malts with the high diastatic power have a diastatic power of 140 or even 160, which is huge. I mean, obviously 160 is bigger than 40, right? That means that it has enough enzymes within that malt itself to be able to basically lend them to something else so it can convert itself and it can also donate enzymes to convert something else as well. Beer brewers use this sparingly. They use uh, some adjuncts, rice for example, uh, and they also use specialty malts, which to be honest don't have a whole lot of starch in there to convert into sugar anyway, but that's another topic. As distillers though, this becomes very, very interesting to us because uh, do you want to use corn? Do you want to use unmalted wheat? Do you want to use unmalted anything? Potatoes. I've done something on potatoes recently. Uh, rice, oats. <laughs> you get the idea, right? So let's start talking about some specific numbers, shall we? Uh, let's work with pale malt. Roughly a diastatic power of 140. Yes, I know your specific products, wherever you are, are going to vary. It's not about the uh, specific products, about, it's about the numbers at this stage. Uh, yes, there is some maths coming. No, it's not bad at all. It is super easy. Uh, and the great thing about this is that you never need to convert into different units. So if you use metric, great. Just go ahead and use metric. If you're thinking in pounds, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. So anyway, one kilo of a pale malt, and that's going to have a diastatic power of, let's say, 140 to make things nice and easy. And to that, we're going to add five kilos of unmalted barley. We're making something kind of like an Irish whiskey, I guess. The easiest way to work out whether or not this is going to work is to basically just average the degrees litma over the entire grist or the entire recipe we're using. So we take one kilo and we multiply it by 140 and then we add to that the diastatic power, the total diastatic power of the unmalted barley, which is zero. 
<laughs> because five times zero is zero. Quick note to say too guys, uh, you don't need to stress about units here. If you want to work in pounds, that's totally fine. It makes really no difference at this point in time. You don't need to make any conversions, just go ahead and use the units you're used to working in. So uh, we have 140 plus zero, which equals, funnily enough, 140. And then we divide 140 by six, which is the total weight of uh, grain we've got here. And we end up with 23. That's too low. That's really, really pushing it. Uh, I would go, like I said, to an absolute minimum of 30 if I was pushing it. Um, I'd like to aim for 40. So let's, uh, let's rearrange things and get back to a recipe that's actually gonna work, shall we? If we still take that one kilo of malted barley at 140, that gives us 140. Uh, and this time we're gonna add two and a half kilos of unmalted barley. So that's two and a half times zero <laughs> is zero. So 140 plus zero, we divide it by 3.5 and we end up with 40. So there we go, that mash is likely to work. A, uh, a quick note here to say that uh, as you start pushing the diastatic power lower, uh, if, you, if you think you're squeaking by a little bit, if you're in the zone where you're unsure, what you can do is just mash for slightly longer. And um, for those guys, if you're mashing like overnight, for example, yeah, sure, I'd, I'd be happy to go down to 30 in that situation. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. That was a super simple example. We only used two things uh, and it scales up beautifully. You can use it with as many as you want. And I'll give you an example of a more complex recipe in just a second, but first, at first. And he says, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you, Patreons. I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate it. You guys let me do what I do uh, so I can keep bringing these videos out for everyone else here on the platform. So thank you guys, it's amazing. If you would like to help support the channel directly, uh, you can go to chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways that you can help out. Uh, one of those ways being Patreon, if it's right for you. If not, you can, uh, for example, use one of the affiliate links to buy some stuff that you wanted anyway, and that gives me a little kickback. All right guys, so uh, let's get into a more complicated uh, example, shall we? And I've got this written down, I'm gonna read it because um, Let's face it, it's getting kind of late in the afternoon and uh, maths isn't my strong suit right now. <laughs> so uh, let's do, I don't know what this is really. Uh, I don't know if this would be nice or not. I don't know if it would be tasty or not. It's completely theoretical. It's not about what the recipe is, it's about what the numbers are. So uh, pale malt, we're using six kilos. Malted corn, we're using 10 kilos. Chocolate malt, half a kilo. Munich malt, two kilos and uh, rye at a kilo. Now, only two of these products actually have a diastatic power, and interestingly enough, uh, this would actually be, in my case, malted corn, and the malted corn I have here has a diastatic power of zero. So just because something's malted doesn't mean it is uh, gonna convert even itself, let alone anything else. But anyway, anyway, so here's the diastatic powers for all of those, uh, and all we need to do is multiply the the unit of measure we're using for each one by the diastatic power. And then we take those numbers from each of the products and add them up to get a total. And then we divide that total by the sum uh, of basically the weight of the grist. And in this case, we end up with 44.5, which uh, means we're golden, guys. We're good. <laughs> so that, it may not be tasty, but it would match. So, uh, I know this is a, a little geekier than potentially what we do a lot of the time, but uh, the reason I put it out here is I keep getting questions on these things. I keep getting people uh, wanting to know if their recipe is mashable, or if it's gonna work, so on and so forth. Uh, and at the end of the day, guys, it's really not hard to work out. That maths is simple. I know it looks complex, potentially, when you put a whole lot of things up on the, on the, on the board, but grab a pen and paper or throw it in a spreadsheet, and you're gonna be golden. I guarantee you, every one of you can do it. So, if you like this video guys, uh, help me out, please, give me a thumbs up. That's uh, really awesome, it does really help me out, it makes a difference. Uh, and if you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below, that helps out a whole lot. And uh, more importantly than all of that, have a kick-ass week guys, I'll catch you next time. See ya.